D.W. Griffiths, we're talking about D.W. Griffiths, and he remarried a very young woman named Evelyn, and um, they were uh, very happy together, uh, living out at Mamaroneck, and um, she had a very, very close school chum whose name was Iris Barry. Iris Barry, of course, if you know film, you'll know that Iris Barry started the MoMA Film Library. I've read stories le recently that um, Iris Barry went to Hollywood and interested all the big stars and moguls in um, giving their films to this archive, and they all read, you know, said sure. And that's not exactly, that's not what happened at all. What really happened was she went out there and they all turned her down. I don't know how this other story got started or where its roots are, but the fact is in Lillian Gish's autobiography, <laughs> written with Anna Pinchot in 1969, she says that, you know, Evelyn's friend came to see her and here's, what, here's the way it goes. Several months after meeting D.W.'s wife, I had a visit from Miss Iris Barry, an attractive young woman who worked for the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. She explained that she was the curator of a small branch called the Film Library. <laughs> I had never heard of it. We've only started, she said. The public is Quote, the public is just beginning to realize that the motion pictures are a unique art form. The museum wants to obtain representative prints which will show the growth of films from their early days. Plans are underway for a new building on West 53rd Street which will have a complete theater and office space for the collection, unquote. Surprised and delighted with this news, I, Mrs. G this is Lillian Gish speaking, surprised and delighted with this news, I asked how I could be of help. Well, our hardest job is to get important films. Nobody in Hollywood was interested. <laughs> but if Griffith contributed his films... Then others would follow suit. In any case, she said, without the birth of a nation and intolerance, their collection would not mean much, <laughs> which is true. They needed all the Griffith films they could get. Quote, could you speak to him for us? Unquote. I said that I would try. Miss Barry added that it was important to obtain his films as soon as possible. Many early pictures had already been ruined. The old type of film disintegrates after a few years. We want to make new copies before the old prints turn to dust. I wrote D.W. immediately, and he replied that he had copies of most of his films. Some were in a vault in Kentucky, others and a New York warehouse. The expense of storage was high. He added that he could not afford to pay the tax that Kentucky was going to levy against his films. I suggested that the film library might be the ideal place for them. They would take care to preserve the negatives and there people would be able to see them and learn from them. He agreed to donate not only the films, but some of his personal files as well. The material included more than 250,000 feet of early films, the correspondence, business papers, and press book, a record of his career as a director and producer from 1913 to 1924. The New York Times reported that, quote, the contribution is regarded as one of the most valuable single acquisitions that the film library has received since it is expected to reveal many interesting details of Griffith's work during the years of his great creativeness. 
John E. Abbott, director of the film library and Iris Barry's husband, said that several months would be required to assort and catalog the material, which Eileen Bowser, remember that name, has since done so carefully. She was the one who went in there and with this volatile nitrate film did the job of figuring out a way to bathe it and preserve it. She's a film preservationist par excellence. Her name is Eileen Bowser, a woman who has since done so carefully and really hasn't gotten credit for it. After DW's gift, many of those same Hollywood moguls and actors who turned her down the first time quickly followed suit and gave their stuff to the uh, museum so that, of course, DW wouldn't be the only one in there. <laughs> there was a great, there was a rivalry between the Hollywood moguls and DW. They kept him poor and uh, you know, he, he really got a kind of a short shrift, even though, even though I know, he made Birth of a Nation. And uh, he, that he, re he didn't regret because he had an ethos for it that was completely innocent, and people don't really understand that.